Good evening and welcome to Center Point. I'm Lindsay Keith. Thanks for starting your week with us. We begin tonight with a major new development in former President Trump's legal battles. A federal judge today set his trial date on federal charges of interfering with the 2020 election for March 4th, 2024. That's the day before Super Tuesday, the biggest day on the presidential primary calendar. Mr. Trump's lawyers had asked that the trial not take place until April 2026, citing the complexity of the case. Now, remember that Mr. Trump is also facing three more indictments. We're joined now by Representative Rich McCormick, Republican of Georgia. Congressman McCormick, welcome to the show. It's good to see you this evening, sir. Thanks. Good to be with you today. Okay, when I think about what a candidate is doing the day before Super Tuesday, it's not sitting in a federal trial. How difficult is this going to make things for former President Trump? And is this judge playing politics by putting the trial on this day? <laughs> the timing of this has been impeccable and it is absolutely politically motivated. If you look what she's done to raise funds off of this, who she's donated to, what she's promised. Since when did the DOJ become the KGB? literally using government as a weapon against its people. This is, uh, this is a government that's supposed to be based on the people, not on a government power. Uh, this country was founded off a of questioning government, and now we're being prosecuted for questioning government. That's a very, very dangerous precedent. It's not just President Trump that's suffering. We have almost 20 people being prosecuted for similar charges, including lawyers being prosecuted for defending people who are questioning the government. This makes no sense at all and is outside the law. It's outside of politics even. This is absolutely prejudicial and, and the timing couldn't be worse. Uh, quite frankly, it's probably helping President Trump in his popularity polls, but it's not gonna help with the election process and certainly not with the trustworthiness of how we view the government. I do wanna talk about the state indictment in your state of Georgia. Newsweek has just uncovered old social media post from Fulton County District DA, Fonnie Willis, who was also, she's obviously prosecuting Trump in that case there, but she was pushing rumors of election um, interference about a water leak during the 2020 vote count. Is this a double standard here by her and now she is indicting for President Trump for this? Of course it's a double standard. It doesn't even matter if it was or not. Uh, the fact that she's prosecuting people for questioning something is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, like I said, we are founded on a nation that questions government, that, that empowers people, that doesn't trust government in general, the powers of government, and to do something that looks so overbearing, something that you are literally put in jail until proven innocent, uh, based on the assumption that you shouldn't be able to question the government's power or, or anything that's come up with, is ridiculous and is counterproductive and it's un-American. Your district includes Fulton County, where this indictment is taking place. You are home on August recess. What are you hearing from your constituents about this fourth indictment? There's real anger out there. Uh, most people see it as something that's politically motivated, which it is. Uh, they're concerned because if you can't protect yourself as a former president, as a billionaire, uh, then who, what average person is going to be able to protect themselves? This is why even in the January 6th trials, uh, people are worried that you're not going to get a speedy trial, that you're not going to get a fair trial, that, that nothing is going to be uh, treated with fairness when it comes to we the people trying to defend against one branch of the government and that the other branches can't help you. Uh, that whether you're a congressman or a president, you can't defend yourself against the judicial process. And that's something as worrisome as anything we've ever seen. If anybody's ever seen or read the book, uh, Gulag Archipelago by Stolchenichin, it talks about an overbearing government that basically at one time seemed like it was in favor of the people and then as soon as it's used against you, watch out because now it's so powerful you cannot fight back. And that's where real, real problems start with governments. Congressman, one other subject briefly with you before we let you go because you are on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, over the weekend, former Ukrainian prosecutor Viktor Shokin came out with what would be bombshell allegations against Joe and Hunter Biden. He is that prosecutor who was investigating the Burisma Energy Company, the same company who had hired um, Hunter Biden to be on their board and then Joe Biden was uh, trying to brandish that he had gotten this guy fired ultimately but Shokin came out saying that Joe and Hunter Biden were both taking bribes. Um, if this is true, how much does it add to the already mounting allegations from several whistleblowers have come out and said the same thing about the Bidens? 
Once again, imagining reversing the tables, and this is Trump that this is being said about, worse than anything that he's ever been accused of and he's been prosecuted for, but yet the Bidens don't seem to be having any repercussions whatsoever. It makes the DOJ seem even more jaded. When you can literally go on public TV and brag about getting a prosecutor fired in return for giving a billion dollars that's supposed to go to a country anyway, that's called quid pro quo. We in Congress get in a lot of trouble for anything that even comes close to smelling like this, and he blatantly admitted it. And when they talk about Trump being in trouble because of the things he's admitted, this is 10 times worse than anything Trump's ever said. And yet we're not talking about prosecuting the, the, the current president. Mm. Congressman Rich Vakora, appreciate your time this evening. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure.